Hey guys, what is going on? It is Justin Masson here with Nintendo Dads. Today we're going to do a Let's Play of Zarzot, which is coming out today, October 18th, on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Big thank you to the developer and PR firm who has provided us a review copy early access to this game. Uh, very excited to get our hands on it. This was shown off at the Indie Direct event that occurred, I believe it was the beginning, no, end of August, the North American one. Um, and, uh, this looked really cool. Um, it looked really, uh, very, very cool. So we're excited for the opportunity to play Zarzot. Um, so we're going to jump right into it here. And again, this is Snow Hydra Games. We appreciate that. So thank you guys very much. A game about cubes. I like that already. So, uh, it has my attention. We have a couple modes here. We have story versus an arcade. We are going to do the story mode. Um, and just a little bit about the story mode to, to make you aware. Uh, let me grab the information on it that I have, because I have information on it that you should know. Do, 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 do. Okay, so the story mode is a... So not only does it again have the arcade and the versus mode, which is fantastic, but the actual entire... There's an entire story mode, single-player campaign, and you're going to play the role of Charcoal, and then you have a pal named Mustard. Mustard and Charcoal. Um, and uh, you're objective is to help help cheer up their, your friend Red on his birthday, uh, or on their birthday, and it uh, takes you through nine different worlds. There is a ton of kind of cosmopolitan areas that you go through, and very, uh, very cool environments, and um, it's a kind of heartwarming story as you and your friend Mustard try and help cheer up your friend Red. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the idea behind the single player campaign. Now, as I mentioned before, there is a four-player local multiplayer option as well, um, and that's it's it's kind of just crazy. There, you know, there's combat arenas, five different game modes, uh, a ton of different kind of weapons like a rapid fire. There's a charge shot. Uh, of course, you can move and duck and dive and get out of the way as well. And uh, and of course, exclusive to Nintendo Switch, there is Joybot, um, and that is a Kind of a, I believe it's banana, banana that shoots, which is which is pretty cool. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna continue to jump right into this and, and see what's going on in our game here. So we're starting off in um, kind of easy control so far. Uh, just I'm just shooting here, trying to destroy the enemies, and we have mustard who appears to be stuck in this this jar in the center. Uh, so we're gonna try and see what we can do here. Controls are fairly um, fairly easy so far. We have a shoot, um, and then we're using analog to to um, kind of zip around um, using the pro controller uh, as well. So uh, interestingly enough, there was a little bit of dialogue uh, before the fight scene here began. So uh, kind of jumping right into the story. Um, interestingly enough, as you shoot, you do get pushed back a little bit. Um, there's a bit of a kickback. Uh, so, oh, what is this? Okay, wow, that looks, that looks scary. <laughs> All right, continuing our way through. There we go. Okay. Controls really, uh, really easily so far, which I like. I am interested about what's going on with our friend in the jar. Mustard, I believe. Not, the jar isn't mustard. Mustard is in the jar, I believe. <laughs> okay. Get some combos going up at the top. It looks like we got a health bar down the bottom that was kind of like maybe, maybe the health of the boss or the level. Collecting something up on the left hand corner looks like some kind of triangles or something that's kind of being left behind, almost debris or whatever you want to call it. Oh! Saturday morning, 10.32 a.m. Okay. It's Red's birthday tomorrow. So we talked a little bit about Red earlier, about the single player. I'm picking up the last part of Red's birthday present today. Okay. But I was supposed to be out of the door five minutes ago. Okay. So... Uh, very cool. So here we have, uh, and again, we're playing as Charcoal, the blue, 
uh, cube uh, talking about red, or sorry, talking about mustard, and uh, going to get Red's birthday present day. So simple kind of quest so far. We've got a nice little room. All right, so still looking for my keys. Let's see what we can find here. There's something shiny over here on the corner, I wonder. I see that one, bottom left-hand corner of the room. There we go. So some dialogue boxes. Let's explore. I can examine a lot of stuff in the room. This is interesting. So I was originally thinking this was just going to kind of be a, uh, like a twin-stick shooter kind of uh, game with that opening scene. And now it's very much, it's not. It's kind of this, I don't know, I don't want to use the word sim game because that's not quite right. Um, yeah. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Looking around, oh, examine something. What we got over here? There are my keys. Told you. All right, so let's, let's buggy. Oh, take the present. Don't forget to take the present. Gotta take the present to red. Gotta take the present to red. Gotta go find my friend Mustard. Uh, we're apparently giving red a rubber ducky. A uh, CD. Looks like some erasers, maybe. That's, that's true friendship. That's what that is. I've always said on my birthday, I hope I get a rubber ducky. Apparently, I live in some kind of complex, some kind of apartmental complex. I'm uh, just moving along here. So yeah, again, I mean, I, I, I kind of was expecting... Oh, I found something. Look at that. Okay, cool. Looks like it's uh, access to the arcade. Okay. Um, I was kind of expecting or thinking it was some type of twin stick shooter game um, with the initial opening scenes and what I had seen uh, kind of trailers before. That does not appear to be it at all. This is definitely a little bit more uh, depth to it. Which I think is fantastic. I, yeah, I'm obviously living in some kind of townhouse apartment. Oh, there's a package there. What's that? Oh, okay. Oh, for me. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. We're moving on. All right. We're going to head on out to, looks like a street. Looks like a nice brick street. Oh, oh. There are some of these uh, bad guys that I've experienced before. Right. Okay. So random encounters with enemies. That seems to be something that happens. Okay. We're we're gonna be living the dream there, is what we'll be doing. Okay, alright. Uh, again I mentioned before that controls are um, pretty easy actually uh, to control, which is great, right? Like it doesn't need to be overly complex. I think sometimes when the game is developed and the, you know levels of complexity makes a barrier to entry challenging i already kind of feel like this is definitely a game i could be sitting down with the kids and playing um you know and again you know we are seeing some shooting and some violence but i mean it's it's cubes exploding so nothing that would be too too uh, worrisome in, in my opinion um and that's fine and then i think just the story adventure of like we have to go meet our friend because it's their birthday and give them a birthday present, right? Like, that's a pretty pretty awesome story and uh, pretty widely uh, accepted and appreciated, so. So I need to get to the jar station. Mustard should be there. Huh. Now, there was a jar at the beginning, right, where our friend was trapped into, so I wonder if that's... Hey! Hello! Look at these flowers. Okay, I... Okay. I kind of like already the character, I mean, the character just by the dialogue that's being built here, right? Like, Mustard appears to be kind of a very simple, kind of like, hey, one directional, like, hey, flower is pretty, hello, kind of uh, person. And Charcoal appears to be kind of very, like, on task, let's go. All right, so we need to get to the forest and the jar departures. Time is at on track 12, okay, it's delayed. Oh, well, you know, he's as shocked as I am about it being delayed. So it's good that our jar got delayed, so we're not late. I hate being late for stuff. Do you guys hate being late for stuff? I hate being late for stuff. All right, so let's, uh, let's mosey on out, mosey on out. Track 12. There we go. Okay, track 12. Okay. That appears to be like a turtle thing. Getting on a jar. Waiting for a jar. There's my jar. There's a jar. There is a jar. Okay. 
Let's head up to the jar on track 12. It's a cube life for me. All right. Look. Yes, I can see. Tickets, they cost five vings. Vings. Vings? V-I-N-G's. Hmm, okay. Do you have five? I don't have five. Darn it, Mustard, you're relying on me for money again. You always have that one friend who's like, can you spot me a fiver? That's what Mustard is, right? If I'm showing up to the ticket place, Mustard, I'm going to need to pay for Mustard. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to be paying for him. Charcoal is that kind of friend who probably also knows this and has packed an extra kind of fiver in his pocket. You know what I'm saying? Or his cube pocket, whatever that is. But we got some enemies. We're going to blast them right now. Uh, so obviously we can't progress progress any further until we destroy these enemies, which we're blasting away pretty well. I feel like there's definitely um, an auto aiming going on here because I don't think I'm that good of a shot um, to be getting these guys the way that I am. Um, nothing wrong with that, but just a bit of a bit of an FYI on that one. Bit of an FYI, which is for your information. Yes, that is what that is. Okay. Uh, looks like those ye yellow rings are things. So there we go. We have got enough maybe to get on our ticket. We have got a ticket to go in the jar and we can mosey on out of here. Again, uh, there's a level of simplicity I think to mustard, which I can appreciate. I think we all can. Um, yeah. But I definitely feel like Charcoal is kind of the leader of this of this relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't know. Just what I'm getting here from the vibe. But I like I like mustard. Good 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 fella. And it looks like we have been shot out of in a we're in a jar and got shot at us in like air cannon. And we're flying through air in a jar. As you do, as you do when you're cubes. You know what I'm saying? Like hashtag cube life. Hashtag in a jar all day. I don't know. I like it though. This is really kind of like abstracting and fun, which I think is great. Um, and again, I think if we're talking from a parenting perspective, um, fair bit of like dialogue that's important to read, right? We're building the story and building the characters based on the dialogue. And we're starting to understand personalities and what the relationship is between each other, which I think is really important to understand. Uh, so we're finished the new area. I got an A here, zero lives, two damages, so I got hit twice, and I got some points there. So we are going to land somewhere. Chapter two. Okay, so Huppin Forest. Huppin Forest, okay. We're gonna head to the upper Huppin. Happen? 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 Huppin? Alright, well, we'll figure out something here. <laughs> Again, you know what? There it is. That's what it is. Mustard reminds me of, like, the Minions from the Minion movie. Do you know what I mean? Like, that kind of, like, simple, simple-minded, good-hearted kind of character. And Charcoal here is kind of like your Groot character, right? Gotta, gotta keep us focused, gotta keep us on task, do what we gotta do. We got places to be, timelines to meet. Let's do this stuff. Um, so again, maybe that's because I've been watching way too many kids' movies, completely possible that that's how I'm inferring these characters to be, but I like it so far. Again, it's actually a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying this this uh, this game. This is really cool. And we haven't even jumped into the arcade or the versus mode, and this is already really fun. Um, again, graphics are beautiful, by the way. Like, So we're in some kind of forest, obviously, we can see some trees, what appears to be like a different marble um, or stone that we're on. You kind of get into these areas where all of a sudden it's like a wave of enemies kind of come into you. The area locks, locks itself in um, and you can't pr progress until you have completed that. So it's kind of, um, I guess I guess what I'd call like maybe brawler elements, right? That'd be very familiar from like a 1980s or 1990s brawler game of like, you know, Double Dragon or Ninja Turtles where all of a sudden you've got, you know, 12 enemies on the screen. You have to, you have to complete them or, or beat them up before you can move on to your next area as well. So... Very cool um, elements or, 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 or similar elements to that, but uh, it works. Players were really well. Oh, look at that butterfly. Very beautiful graphics, though, again. Butterflies don't stay in one place. Fair play, fair play.
It's a little bit of a, we got a little bit of a hop here, by the way. You don't have to blast through um, everything. You can just kind of hop over these, these as well, um, walls. So we're doing that. I also noticed on the top of my block, I've got this heart. It looks very adorable. Oh, we're, we're reaching one of the areas that we have to combat and fight in now. There we go. All right, finishing off the waves here. Doing all right. Wave clear. So again, I think like, you know, and I mean, we're only we're only about 15 minutes in this Let's Play already, um, but I would definitely recommend this game. Like this is this is very cool. This is very fun. I love the atmosphere they're creating. I like the character design. There's a chair. Should we have a sit in the chair? Ah, sure. Why not? Ah, there we go. Sit in the chair. Relax. Rest ourselves. And move on. Again, love the graphics. The kind of this, you know, it feels like these trees, these stones are obviously taken from real world photos or examples. And then to kind of counter that with this simplistic art style of the cube and this kind of world that is is occurring in the middle of this is very interesting. Um, yeah, I find this very cool. I like it. Definitely some strategy here as well. Um, to to fighting the the enemy cubes, I guess is what we're gonna call them, or the glowing orange spiky balls. Um, you'll also notice that like as as we kill more enemies, there's this kind of like right below my one time one point five times. There's this kind of activation switch, which kind of I think is like a a last ditch move to use. Look at that! Look at that butterfly. Okay, cool, very cool. Um, it it kind of gives you the, the thought of like reminds me a bit of in some ways Pikmin. Right where there's a world going on around you that is smaller and that we can't see, but is exists. And I think when we think of children and the imagination that children have, um, that like anything's possible, and there's fairies around, and this and, and all this kind of stuff. That like this kind of feeds into that that imagination world that children can associate themselves with. I think. That's what this, this does, I think, really beautifully well, actually. Um, and again, in a very simplistic way of like, there could actually be little cubes zipping around in my front yard by the blocks and, and by my front door and by my the trees in my house, and they're just moving along to find a banana, right? Um, there's a simplicity in that, which I think becomes genuine and engaging. Um, and then there's this other world, right? Of like going to the train stations, as we see this map here as well, and getting into a jar and launches me over there, um, which I think is very, very cool. So yeah, hats off to, to the developer and, and, and the team behind this game because I think it's it's really cool. through here. All right, so elevator. Some more enemies that we are, we are fighting. jump in that. Oh, warning. This means we got some bosses coming in. Got some bosses or enemies. Here we go, folks. Here we go. Again, I, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting injured or hurt here. I'm saying I'm probably willing to come almost here for now, um, but I definitely don't feel like it's too easy. 
Um, I feel like I'm definitely, you know, having to be very aware of what's around me and cautious of what I'm doing. Um, so nice level of challenge as well. And I think we're only in chapter two thus far as well, so I, I imagine the difficulty level probably ramps up as the game ramps up as well. So we have got another big warning level coming up through. Okay, so we've got lots of bosses coming in here. I'm going to kind of sit back here in this nice little pocket and try and uh, try and finish. Oh, okay, they're actually going to come the other direction. Of course they will be. Thought I had, I thought I had a master plan there. I'll sit in the one corner and, and, and destroy them, and and that's that's not what's going to happen. Not going to happen Wave clear. Love it. All right, oh, we got some more. Some more, not necessarily waves, but just come uh, stragglers, I guess. So. Not necessarily every encounter will be in a wave, but you can also have just kind of stragglers like this, but definitely the, I guess, the intensity of the fights uh, increases when we're in waves. And that's fair. Okay, I suspect we're going to have a wave here, judging by, yeah. <laughs> judging by the setup, it makes me think, yep, there's definitely going to be. So I kind of like the fact that, you know, these um, pieces of, of wood or rock or whatever it is are here as well to kind of act as almost like a barrier or buffer that you need to use every once in a while. I think it's very, very cool. Yeah, okay. Doing alright with this wave. There we go. Okay. Ooh. Getting, uh, okay, there we go. The spinning spiky thing is always bad. Never good. It's never good. Always feel like we're going to lose when we do that. All right, looks like we're finishing off that area pretty quick here. We've got to kill a couple more bosses, and we'll be on our way through our next level. All right, so it looks like we are finishing off this stage area in a couple moments. Ooh, this is actually a little bit more intense for sure. Lots of ducking and dodging and then diving as a cube. Um, the spinny things are a pain, but you know, you have the ability to jump over them too, so I could always just jump. But I'm gonna just shoot them, just shoot them. Clear that wave and we're gonna move on to our next area. Do 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 do. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Still kind of in the forest area, which is nice. We're gonna turn the corner. Love the wood tiling. Turn the corner. What is this? What do you mean you're closed? Okay, it looks like it's um, kind of a coffee, coffee shop. Found another cube. Now this is not mustard, and I suspect this is not red. Um, so, do you try the banana is? Okay. It's a new character we're meeting here. Um, don't have a name for them yet, but they appear to be very upset the coffee shop is closed. Very upset. Um, I sometimes get cranky when I don't have coffee. It's fair enough. If you've ever listened to the podcast, I'm cranky at 4 a.m. when I don't have coffee. So, I hear you, buddy. Struggle is real, right? Oh, what is this? A little fountain. Okay. Again, I kind of love this uh, this world that we're exploring here in this forest, right? Uh, oh, got a little mushroom thing. Oh, what's over here? A little shiny cube. Oh, oh, look at that. Okay, cool. Another one of those little um, tokens that we kind of discovered before. 
Uh, some kind of, looks like a ladybug. Let's see what's going on with a ladybug. Can we talk to ladybug? Oh, of course we can talk to ladybug. Do you know why the coffee shop is closed? Valid question. Absolutely valid. Ran out of cups. Okay. You cannot have an open coffee shop without any cups. That is, makes sense to me. I don't think that that's unreasonable by any stretch of the imagination. Um, if not all cubes, no cubes. I appreciate that. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a little bit of... A little bit of a good uh, racial joke there, I guess, right? Not everyone knows everyone. Um, I had that recently. Hey, there's this person from Canada. Do you know them? Interestingly enough, I did. So uh, it doesn't play out as well, but you get the point. Uh, but I like that. Cubes knowing cubes. That's pretty funny. All right. So Ladybug is going to talk about this, like this green cube needs to bring it down a notch. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, really, really just check yourself before you wreck yourself, Cube. Okay? He's making, he's making a bit of a scene, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, you know, but I guess, you know, if we were in Tim Hortons and they ran out of cups, I think we'd all be a little bit upset. Do you know what I mean? Canadian reference there. So, you know, Starbucks, localize it for however you want. Costa, whatever. But if I didn't have coffee, I'd be upset as well. Again, I love the fact that these feel like actual conversations I could hear somewhere and that I could just roll up into and be like, oh yeah, I could totally see your point. What is this? Who is, what is this thing? This looks like a jelly, a frog made out of like some weird jello. Your man is in my way, so can I move? Waiting for a friend. Okay. Yep, still. Okay, so he wants me to help him find his friend. So maybe that's a side quest later. Right now though, can't deal with you. Can't deal with you. I need to go find a solution for the coffee. That's the cube life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's what you do every every day of the cube life. You got to find solutions for people's problems. I'm trying to find a banana. I'm trying to get ready for my friend Red's birthday party. I don't know where mustard is right now. Oh, hey, look at this. What did I find? A cup. A coffee cup. Okay, let's run this one back. There's a little bit of a fetch quest for you. But let's run this one back to our uh, our disgruntled green cube who is uh lacking coffee and patience at this point in my opinion um but let's get that sorted shall we let's bring this over to him i like how that fungus or that mushroom kind of looks like a tree i think that's very cool i like that all right bring it over here yeah found a cup ah, everyone's happy now everyone's happy because they found a cup i think your man your ladybug didn't want to open the store no matter what and now i found an excuse I'm going to serve one cost customer. Yep, brewed into my mouth. Okay, well, there we go. Um, I think that just reaffirms, like, bad behavior. Gets what they want, and I don't think that's really what we want to be saying here. Oh, look at that. Perfect. There is there is mustard. Found his banana bread. You don't need cups to eat pastries. Fair enough. Actually, it was a bit of a problem. It was a bit of a hassle. Your attitude was inexcusable. I'm going to tell you that one right now. All right. So now your man is, your cube is zipping off because he was late for work because he had a fit in front of the coffee shop. <sighs> Banana. All right. Folks, we're going to actually end the Let's Play here. Uh, this has been about 30 minutes of, again, uh, Zarzot from um, A Cube Life. Uh, big thanks to the developers and PR firm who passed this along. I would definitely recommend picking this game up. It is a ton of fun. It's available on the eShop right now. And uh, thanks for supporting Nintendo Dads. Bye-bye. Thank you.